All right, section five, air brakes. Okay, section five, we're on page 47. Okay, there are three types of braking systems. Okay, three types of braking systems. Um, all brakes use compressed air to make the brakes work. Air brakes are good and safe way of stopping large and heavy vehicles, but the brakes must be well maintained and used properly. Air brakes are really three different braking systems. You have your service brake, your parking brake, and your emergency brake. Again, you have your service brake, parking brake, and emergency brake. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you when you use the brake pedal during normal uh, during normal driving. Okay, that's just a service brake. Your parking brake system applies and releases the parking brakes when you use the brake the parking brake control. And then the emergency brake system uses parts of the service and the parking brake to stop the vehicle in a brake system failure. All right. So that, and of course, obviously that is definitely a test question. Again, um, three different braking systems. Again, your service brake, your parking brake, and your emergency brake. And again, your emergency brake is um, parts of the service and the parking brake to stop the vehicle in a brake system failure. Right. All right, so let's get into it. 5.1, the parts of an air brake system. There are many parts to an air brake system. You should know about the parts discussed here. All right, so we're going to start with the air compressor, right? The air compressor pump pumps air into the air storage tanks, and that's all it does. The air compressor pumps air into the air storage tanks, right? The air compressor governor, the governor controls when the air compressor will pump air into the air storage tank, okay? So that's the air compressor's responsibility, okay? So it's going to tell the air compressor, put air into the tank, and it's going to tell that when to cut it off. It says when air tank pressure rises to the cutout level around 125 pounds per square inch, the governor stops the compressor from pumping air. When the tank pressure falls to the cut, cut in pressure around 100 pound square inch, the governor allows the compressor to start pumping again. So that's the only responsibility of the governor. What it does is it tells the compressor, it puts air into compressor, um, I mean, sorry, it tells the compressor when to put air into the tank, all right? That is the, the, the sole purpose of that governor, okay? And then, of course, the air storage tank, the air stores, air storage tanks are used to hold compressed air, okay? So that's the, the storage tank's responsibility. So you have your storage tank. Then, of course, you have your air compressor and your, your air compressor governor. That's how those, those three work together, Okay. Your air compressor, your governor tells the air compressor to put air into the tank. All right. And then, of course, the governor, it turns it on. Once you're, um, we're going to talk about more about um, PSI a little bit later. But again, your, um, when it, when you have the air tank gets to 100 PSI of uh, the compressed air that's in there, then the air, the governor turns the air, tells the air compressor to put more air in of course, and then when it gets to 125 PSI, it tells it to turn it off. That's, the, that's, the, that's how those three work together. The next thing we have here is our air tank drains. Compressed air usually has some water and some compressed oil in it, okay, which is bad for air brakes. For example, the water can freeze in cold weather and cause brake failure. The water and oil tend to collect in the bottom of air tanks. Be sure that your dr you drain the air tanks completely. Each air tank is equipped with a, a drain valve in the bottom. There are two types. You have a manual 
okay, which is operated by turning a quarter turn or by pulling a cable. And then you have your automatic and the water and the oil is automatically expelled. These tanks may be equipped from um, these tanks may be equipped for manual draining as well. Automatic air tanks are available with electric heating devices. These help prevent freezing of automatic drain in cold weather. Okay, again, that's air tank drains. Fortunately, thank goodness, our buses, of course, have uh, automatic. Okay, ours are automatic. All right, so then you have your alcohol evaporator. Alcohol evaporator. Some air brake systems have an alcohol evaporator to put alcohol into the air system. This helps reduce the risk of ice in air brake valves and other parts during cold weather. Ice inside the system can make the brakes stop working. That is a test question. Again, ice inside the system can make the brakes stop working. Okay. Check the alcohol container and fill up as necessary every day during cold weather. Daily, daily, daily air tank drainage is still needed to get rid of water and oil. Then you have your safety valve. Okay, you see that here in the picture. Your safety valve, um, relief, uh, safety relief valve is intended, uh, installed or installed in the first tank the air compressor pumps into. Okay, the safety valve protects the tank and the rest of the system from too much pressure. So remember we talked about earlier how the governor will cut it on at 100 and it'll turn it off at 125. Okay, it'll turn that air off. Well, the purpose of the safety valve is it's usually set to open at 150 PSI. Because that means that if too much pressure gets into the tank, the safety valve is automatically going to open at 150 PSI. If the safety valve releases air, something is wrong. Have the fault fixed by a mechanic. Okay? So again, that's the purpose of, that's the only purpose of the safety valve is if for some reason too much air gets into that tank, if it gets up to 150 PSI, the safety valve is going to open and blow that air out of the tank. All right, that's moving on. Um, 5.1, I'm sorry, 5.1.7, the brake pedal. Of course, you guys know this already. Um, brake pedal, you put on the brakes by pushing down on the brake pedal. It is also called, um, right here, it is also called a foot valve or the treadle. Okay, a brake, again, you'll see that as a test question as well. You would definitely see that as a question, test question. It will be referencing the brake pedal, right? See the foot? It'll reference the brake pedal, but it will actually say treadle or it may actually say foot. So make sure that you understand that brake, foot, and treadle is the same thing. It is the brake pedal, all right? Pushing the pedal down harder applies more air pressure. All right, let's see. Oh, and here it um, talks about this a little bit more as well. Brake pedal sir, is the actual service brake. All right, and here in this picture, I'm going to just pull this up real quick. Here in this picture, it's kind of talking about, um, you see you're over to the left-hand side, you see your governor at the top, right? So that's your governor. You got your air compressor there. Of course, you got um, air compressor, your governor. Then you have your alcohol evaporator. And then, of course, going in, you see that arrow right there? There's an arrow going into the storage tank. If you flip over real quick to page 49, page 49, okay, 49 at the top there, if there it says it's called one-way check valve, and it's in the picture at the top under it says air brake system components and locations, again on page 49, and it's right below, so you see hand valve, you see compressor, and then you see one-way check valve. What a one-way check valve is, the purpose of it is to make sure that the air flows in one direction. That's the, that's the only purpose of a one-way check valve. And I did see that as a test question, so make sure that you're aware of that. When you see that, you know that a one-way check valve 
is to make sure that the air flows in one direction. All right, so you got your air your um, air valve, then you got your safety valve at the top. Again, that's going to open up at 150 psi if too much air it gets in the tank. Then you have your air tank store um, tank drain at the bottom, and then of course it leads over to your brakes. Right, and we'll talk about more about spring brakes, but you got your your brake chambers, and then of course your foundation brakes. And most of course vehicles have S cams, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. All right, so that's kind of how it looks underneath the vehicle, right? That's how the brakes and the the um, governor and the the storage tanks. That's how all that inform that all that looks underneath your um, the vehicle you'll be driving, or more or less your your bus. All right, so we've already talked about that, and this is just another picture of it, right? The air compressor, the governor, the air storage tank. You got your brake chambers, right? You have, of course, chambers in the front, and you have brake chambers in the in the in the back as well. All right, so let's get into foundation brakes under five point one point eight. Five point one point eight. Okay, and again, um, I mentioned this just a moment ago. Foundation brakes are used at each wheel. The most common type is the S cam brake. Okay, the S cam brake. Um, brake drums are located on each of the back um, vehicle's axles. Okay, the vehicle, the weight, I'm sorry, the wheels are bolted to the drums. The braking mechanism is inside the drum. All right, so let's talk about S cams. And also we have it in, um, in our uh, presentation as well here. It says, when you push the brake pedal, okay, when you push the brake pedal, air is let into each brake chamber, okay? So we looked at that here back at this picture, right? So you push that, push the pedal, right? So you got your brake chambers, right? You got four brake chambers. So air is pushed into each brake chamber. Air uh, pressure pushes the rod out. So here in the picture, air pressure pushes that rod out. So you see that push rod? And it's kind of gold. It's got a pointed to right there. There's your push rod, right? So again, air pressure pushes the rod out. And then what it does is it moves the slack adjuster, thus twisting the brake camshift. All right. So again, there's your push rod. It's the gold. And then your, your um, slack adjuster is this kind of a... Uh, um, silver piece right here right so what it does is you when you push on the brake pedal right and it will uh, put of course push air into the brake chambers right and then the air pressure pushes the rod out right it moves the slack adjuster by twisting when it, when it moves that slack adjuster then it twists right this s cam into position Okay, so it twists that S cam in position. The S cam forces the brake shoes away from from um, away from I'm sorry away from one another, right? And presses them against the inside of the brake drums, right? So that is how that vehicle will stop, right? That's how that vehicle will stop. Again, the S cam forces the brake shoes away from one another and presses them against the inside of the brake drum, all right? So when you release the brake pedal, okay, so when you take your foot off the brake pedal, right, the X cam rotates back, and then that spring pulls the brake shoes away from the drum, okay? Pulls the, S, the, pulls the brake shoe away from the drum, all right? And here, I want to mention this, the slack adjuster, moving the slack adjuster, the purpose of the slack adjuster is to adjust the slack. The only purpose of a slack adjuster is that it adjusts the slack, okay? And we'll talk about that more. Um, we'll come back into this picture um, after a while. Um, there's some more. Um, I'm going to show you one other thing about the slack adjuster as well. But again, the purpose of the slack adjuster, it is just the slack, okay? It adjusts the slack. 
All right, moving on. Let's talk about wedge and disc brakes. And again, like we said, S cam brakes are the most common brakes. But you do have what is called wedge brakes and disc brakes. Wedge is um, the brake chamber pushes uh, push rod pushing. I'm sorry, brake chamber push rod pushes a wedge directly between the ends of two brake shoes, and then disc brakes and an operated disc brakes air pressure acts on a um, brake chamber and slack adjuster like a S cam. But instead of the S cam, a power screw is used. Again, these are two other different kinds of brakes, but again, S cams are the more common S um, S cams are the mo more common brakes. All right, so we've talked about foundation brakes. We've talked about the parts of the air brake system. All right, so let's talk about your gauges. 5.1.9 for 0.9. All right, all vehicles with air brakes have a pressure um, gauge connected to the air tank. If the vehicle has a dual air brake system, there will be a gauge for one half of the system or a single gauge with two needles. Okay, these gauges tell you how much pressure is in the air tanks. Okay, again, the supply pressure gauge show tells you how much air is in the air tank. Okay, hence the word supply. This is the supply, right? This is how much you have. All right. Your application pressure, uh, application pressure gauge, this gauge shows you how much air pressure you are applying to the brakes. Okay. This is how much you are actually applying to your brakes. This is the application. This is how much you're using. It says this gauge is not on all vehicles. And we don't have this on our buses as well. Okay, we have the supply gauge, but we do not have an application. Increasing application pressure to hold the same speed means the brakes are fading. You should slow down and use a lower gear. The need for increased pressure can also be caused by brakes out of adjustment Air leaks are mechanical problems, okay? Again, that's a pl um, application pressure gauge. And again, and I didn't say this, and I should have, supply pressure gauge and, of course, application pressure gauge, those definitely would be a test question. So make sure that you are aware their of what their function is. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to this right here, and this is called the air um, supply pressure gauge. And we're going to talk about this for this um, diagram for just a moment. Okay, this is a like more like this. This is a gauge. Okay, so this is a, a the picture of a of a gauge. So this gauge here is showing where where uh, at the, on the right hand side where we talked about the air compressor cutting in and cutting out, right? So the, this is a gauge. This is the amount of, pre of air, um, your, su your um, supply pressure that you have, right? So if you're up to at 125, your air compressor is going to cut off, right? It's saying that you have enough air in your storage tanks, okay? You have enough air, so it's going to turn it off. When you start to use it, right, when you use air, so when you're using your brake, right, you're using air that's in your tank. So as you use it, um, what's going to happen is the air, the governor is going to tell the air compressor, once you get a, at around 100 PSI, it's going to tell the governor um, to the governor, I'm sorry, the governor is going to tell the air compressor to fill it up again, more or less put air into the air compressor. So that's kind of like, and where you see where it says normal operating range, and that's kind of what's going to happen as you're using the air, as you're using the brake pedal, air, um, the air compressor is going to continually come on, put air back into your tank as you're using it. So that's kind of how that happens, right? So if for some reason the air, the governor um, does not cut off the air compressor, 
right at 125 psi and it still is still putting air into it right and if it gets up to 150 your safety valve of course is going to blow that air out okay it blows that ex excess out but of course if that happens then you know there's something wrong with your governor and of course you need to get it fixed immediately all right so that's again a, the air compressor cut in normal operating range air compressor cut out your blowout your safety all right so we're going to come back and talk about of course the um, warning system and the air uh, in the, the um, spring brakes. All right, so let's move forward and talk about your low air pressure warning. Low air pressure warning. A low air pressure warning signal is required on vehicles with air brakes. A warning signal you can see must come on before the air pressure in the tank falls below 55 psi or one half of the compressor governor cutout pressure on older vehicles. The warning is usually a red light, okay? A buzzer may also come on. Another type of warning is called a wigwag. That's here in the picture on the left-hand side. This device drops a mechanical arm into your view when the pressure in the system drops below 55 psi. An automatic wigwag will rise out of your view when the pressure in the system goes above 55 psi. The manual reset type must be placed in an out of view position manually. It will not stay in place unless the pressure in the system is above 55 psi. On large buses, it is common from the, for the low pressure warning devices to signal at 80, between 80 and 85 psi. All right, so back here in this picture, here we see the warning signal. Uh -oh. We see the warning signal light rebuzzer, right? So if for some reason our um, air pressure gets down to between around 55, 60 PSI, our warning system or our light is, should come on. Okay, it should be a light and it's a loud buzzard, right? And it should come on letting us know that we have low air pressure that is our low air pressure warning light all right so let's talk about um real quick uh, front wheel braking front wheel braking down toward probably the middle of that first paragraph toward the to, probably toward the end of the first paragraph rather it says front wheel braking is good under all conditions that is a test question again Front wheel braking is good under all conditions. Tests have shown front wheel skids from braking is not likely, even on ice. Make sure the control is in the normal position to have normal stopping power. Okay, again, front wheel braking is good under all conditions. All right, let's talk about spring brakes, right? Let's talk about spring brakes. So it says all trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. They must be held on, this is a test question, they must be held on by mechanical force because air pressure can eventually leak away. Spring brakes are usually used to meet these needs. When driving, Powerful springs are held back by air pressure. That's a test question as well. Again, when driving, powerful springs are held back by air pressure. If the air pressure is removed, the springs put on the brakes. A parking brake control in the cab allows the driver to let the air out of the spring brakes. This lets the springs put the brakes on. A leak in the air brake system, which causes all of the air to be lost, will also cause the springs to put on the brakes. Okay. Tractors and tractor and straight truck spring brakes will come fully on when the air pressure drops to a range of 20 to 20 to 45 psi. Do not wait for the brakes to come on automatically. When the low air pressure warning light and buzzer first come on, Bring the vehicle to a safe stop right away while you still can control the vehicle, right? While you can still control it. 
The braking power of spring brakes depends on the brakes being in adjustment. Again, that statement is a test question. Again, the braking power of spring brakes depends on the brakes being in adjustment. If the brakes are not adjusted properly, neither the regular brakes nor the emergency and or the emergency and um, parking brakes will work right. Okay, that's talking about spring brakes. All right, so back here in our picture, we talked about this, the air supply pressure gauge, the warning system light, the warning system, right? The light will come on about 55 PSI, pound square inch of air, the equipressed air we have in our tank, right? So if for some reason, because, okay, so of course, again, when that warning signal comes on and you're driving, the first thing you're wanting to do is find somewhere to pull over. The more that's, that's what they're saying is that your governor is not cut telling your um, air compressor to put air in your tanks, right? Especially if you're driving. So what you're wanting to do is pull that vehicle over as soon as quickly, it's not as soon as you can, as quickly as you can safely do so. Because what will happen if you continue to lose air, your spring brakes will engage. Right, your spring brake again is your emergency and your parking brake. All right, so your spring brakes will engage and it will actually stop that vehicle in the road, wherever you're driving. It will stop that vehicle if you get down anywhere down to around 35 PSI. Okay, says so between 20 and 45. So around in that, the middle of that, you that vehicle will stop. Right. So you definitely don't want that to happen because you won't have like what it say here. Um, what was the sentence when it said when low air pressure warning light and buzzer first come on, bring the vehicle to a safe stop right away while you can still control the brakes. OK, while you can still control those brakes. All right. And we talked about this already, the power of uh, the braking power of spring brakes depends on the brakes being in proper adjustment, of course. Once you lose all air, you cannot move that vehicle, okay? This is, again, this is when your emergency and your spring brake have come on. I'm sorry, your emergency and your parking brake have come on. Um, once you lose all the air, you cannot move that vehicle unless the vehicle has a separate air tank, some vehicles, such as buses, have a separate air tank so the parking brake can be released and the vehicle can be moved a short distance in an emergency. All right, so our buses do have dual tanks, right? So for some reason, our um, warning comes on and we can't quickly get that bus, of course, off the, to the side of the road safely. They can't find, you know, get a safe spot to get that bus off the road in an emergency. Um, we you can um, the parking brake again can be released, and then we can move it a short distance to get it off the road. Right, but we definitely don't want to, to that to ever happen. Don't ever want to be caught in that situation. All right. Um, speaking more about um, your spring brake, your parking brake. Use the parking brake whenever you, whenever you park. All right, whenever you stop, you should use your parking brake. Remember. Large vehicles do not have a park on the gear um, column. Okay, they, they do not have a park on the gear column. All right, the um, under 5.1.15 in newer vehicles with air brakes, you put on the parking brakes using a diamond shaped yellow push pull control knob. You pull the knob out to push the parking brake on and push it in to release them, okay? Caution, never push the brake pedal down when the spring brakes are on. <clears throat> if you do, the brakes could be damaged by the com uh, combined force of the springs and the air pressure. Many brake systems were, are designed so that it, this will not happen, but not all systems are set up that way and those that are may not always work. It is much be better to develop the habit of not pushing the brake pedal down when the spring brakes are on, okay? Don't push the brake pedal down 
when the springs are on. Five point two dual air brakes. Dual air brakes. <clears throat> Most heavy duty vehicles use dual air brake systems for safety. A dual air brake system has two separate air brake systems, which uses a single set of brake controls. Each system has its own tanks, hoses, lines, etc. One system typically operates the regular brakes on the rear axle or axles. The other system operates the regular brakes on the front axle. Both systems supply air to the trailer. The first system is called the primary and the second one is called the secondary. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air system, allow time for the air compressor to build up to at least 100 PSI pressure in both the primary and secondary systems. Okay. Watch the primary and secondary air pressure gauges. Pay attention to the low air pressure warning light and buzzer. The warning light and buzzer should shut off when the air pressure in both systems rises to a value set by the manufacturer. The value must be greater than 60 or 55 PSI. The warning light and the buzzard should come on before the air pressure drops below 55 PSI in either system. If this happens while driving, you should stop right away, safely park the vehicle. If one air system is very low on pressure, either the front or the rear brakes will not be operating fully. This means it will take you longer to stop. Bring the vehicle to a safe stop and have the air brakes system fixed. Okay. All right. That's dual brakes. Now we're going to get into inspecting our air brake system. All right. So remember back in chapter two, where we talked about um, the seven steps to inspecting our vehicle, pre-tripping, right? Inspecting our vehicle, seven steps. Well, with air brakes, there are some additional um, steps that you would have to do. All right, so let's get into it. You should use the basic seven-step inspection procedure described in section two to inspect your vehicle. There are more things to inspect on a vehicle with air brakes than one without them. These things are discussed below. All right, so the first one says, 5.3.1 during your um, step two. Okay, remember step two where we, um, on step two, 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 one second, let's take a quick look back here. Well, let's see, step two was check your engine compartment. So this is when you pop the hood, right? You're popping the hood and you're checking, you're looking at your engine oil, your coolant levels, power steering fluid, windshield wiper, all of your fluids, and you're checking your belts and so forth. So additionally, while you're under there, you're also going to check your air compressor drive belt. Okay, your air compressor drive belt. If the air compressor, if it's air compressor driven, belt driven, you need to check the condition and the tightness of the belt. Okay, it should be in good condition. Again, if the air compressor is belt driven, Check the condition and the tightness of the belt, okay? The next step you're going to do is um, during step five, okay? Remember back in, um, in, um, in chapter two, when we did our walk around inspection, right? So we went to the front of the vehicle to check that the low beams are on, check our four-way stoppers. Um, we did a general walk around. We cleaned our lenses and our reflectors. Of course, we check the, the condition of the front axle, right? So in addition to doing that, we're also going to check our slack adjusters on our S-cam brakes, okay? So again, this is for air brake. If you have air brakes, during your, um, your step five walk around, check slack adjusters on S-cam brakes, okay? So the vehicle is gonna be, make sure it's parked on the level ground, 
we make sure that we chalk the wheels to prevent the, prevent the wheel from moving. And then we're gonna release the parking brake so that you can move the slack adjusters, all right? So again, you're parked on the level ground, chalk the wheel, chalk the, the tires, sorry, chalk the tires, release the parking brake so you can move the slack adjusters. And then with a gloved hand, okay, with a gloved hand. So let's go back here real quick. Uh, let's see here. Um, right here. So with a glove hand. So here's a slack adjuster, right? That little gray that's oh, right in front of the red. So our slack adjuster. With a glove hand, we're going to pull. What does it say? Pull hard on each slack adjuster that you can reach. If a slack adjuster moves more than one inch where the push rod attaches to it, right, right there at the top, um, it probably needs adjustment, okay? That is a definite test question. Again, if a slack adjuster moves more than one inch where the push rod attaches to it, it probably needs adjustment. Adjust it or have it adjusted. Vehicles with too much brake slack can be very hard to stop. Out of adjustment brakes are the most common problems found in roadside inspections. And remember we talked about roadside inspections? If a federal or state inspector stop the vehicle and it can put your vehicle out of service, right? The vehicle will be put out of service. All right. All right so let's go back. Okay, so again, gloved hand, pull hard on each slack adjuster. The, the, it should not move more than one inch. If it does, it needs adjustment. All right, so down here at the bottom of page 50, at the very bottom on the, um, the first row, it says check brake drums. Okay, page 50, check brake drums. Lines and hoses, brake drums or disc must not have cracks longer than one half the width of a friction area. Linings, um, which is friction material, must not be loose or soaked with oil or grease. Guys, that is definitely a test question. Again, um, brake drums, must not have cracks longer than one half the width of a friction area. Definitely a, take, a, a test question. Linings must not be loose or soaked with oil or grease. Okay, so now we're gonna get into step seven. Okay, step seven under our, um, again, we're still in our pre-trip, right? So we, we went back, of course, we said we had to add a step in um, a step in step two in the check in the compartment. We had to check the air compressor drive belt. Then we had to get into step five, right? We're, we're checking our slack adjuster with a gloved hand. Pull on the slack, slack adjuster. Shouldn't be moved more than the inch. Now we're gonna get into step seven, which is the final air brake check, right? Final air brake check. So there's a few tests in here that you're gonna have to do. The first one is testing your low pressure warning signal. Okay, your low pressure warning signal. We've talked about that all wet ready. So you're gonna shut off the engine when you have enough air pressure so that the low pressure warning signal is not on. Okay, so in other words, you're gonna let your, let your air pressure build up, right? You're gonna have a 125 PSI of air pressure. And then it says, turn the engine off. And then you're gonna turn it back to where just the power. So you're not gonna actually turn it on, you're gonna turn it to, so you have electrical power, right? And then you're gonna step on and off the brake pedal to reduce the air tank. Cause remember, putting your foot on, on the brake is what you're, you're, that's how you're using your air in your tank. 
So what this is saying is it wants you to pump up and down on the brake pedal to reduce the air tank. The low air pressure warning signal must come on before the pressure drops to less than 55 PSI in the air tank or tank with the lowest air pressure in dual systems. Okay, so what you're doing is you're pumping the brake down. That's all you're doing is you're pumping the brake down. And then once you're, you're and you'll see your, your, the needle, it's on 125 PSI for un, un, in your um, supply, um, in your supply pressure gauge, you'll see that needle go down. And once it gets to about 60 to 55 PSI, your buzzer is going to come on. The red light is going to come on. And what that is doing is this testing. You're doing a test to make sure that it comes on if you're driving. Because what this says is if the signal doesn't work, you could lose air pressure and not even know it. All right. So you want to make sure that that works when you're doing your pre-trip inspection. All right. Pre-trip inspection. All right. The next test is checking that your spring brake comes on. Okay. And we know this how um, that the spring brake is your service brake, right, is your, um, sorry, your emergency brake and your parking brake, okay? Your emergency brake and your parking brake. It's a combination, th those two combined. So again, it says continue to fan off the air pressure by stepping on and off the brake pedal to reduce the tank pressure. Okay, so you're going to continue to push down, up and down on the, the brake pedal. The tractor protection valve and the parking brake valve should come, um, should close. It should pop out. So in other words, this right here, your parking, your parking brake, right? It should pop out. Okay, that parking brake should automatically pop out. All right. Um... It says a tractor protection uh, valve and the parking brake valve should should cl um, close. It should pop out on a tractor trailer combination vehicle and the parking brake brake valve should should close or should pop out on other combination and single vehicle types when the air pressure falls to the manufacturer specifics between twenty and forty five psi. This will call the springs cause the spring brakes to come on. Okay, and again, this is checking your spring brakes. All right, the next test that we're going to do is testing your air pressure buildup. Okay, checking your air pressure, air, air, I'm sorry, your rate of air pressure buildup. When the engine is at operating RPMs, the pressure should build from 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds in dual air systems. Okay, so you should be able to look at your gauge. So your gauge is building up and you at 85 PSI, right? And you see the gauge at 85 PSI from 85 PSI to 100 PSI. It should build, it should be, I'm sorry, it should build to 100 PSI within 45 seconds in dual air systems. And it says, if the air pressure does not build fast enough, your pressure may drop too low during driving. And think about that, right? So you're driving, and of course, you're, you're stopping to pick up children, and you're pushing on the brake and off the brake, pushing on and off the brake. But if your air pressure isn't building up, if you're using more air than it's actually is, it's being put back in, then your warning light could easily come on, right? Your, your low air pressure warning light may come on because you're using more air that's being put back into your tank. So what this test rate of air pressure buildup is, is saying from it should only take 45 seconds to get from 85 to 100 PSI. It's just making sure that that air is building back up fast enough. All right. And the next test you have here under step seven is your air leakage rate okay your la air leakage rate so with the fully charged air system okay you're at 125 psi right turn off the engine right 
release the parking brake. And what you're going to do is you're going to time the air pressure drop. Okay, the loss rate should be less than 2 PSI in one minute for a single vehicle. A single vehicle is a bus, right? And less than 3 PSI in one minute for a combination vehicle. Okay, so again, testing your air leakage rate. We're just trying to make sure that you don't have a, you don't, you're not leaking too much, too much air, right? So you have a fully charged air system. You're at 125 PSI, turn the engine off, release the parking brake, and then you're going to time it. So you're looking at your, your, you're looking at your gauge, your supply pressure gauge, and you see it at 125. It should not drop more than two PSI in one minute for a single vehicle. Meaning that for my single vehicle, it shouldn't go below 123, right? And then if I'm in a combination vehicle, it shouldn't go below 122, uh, right? It should not be go below 122. All right, so that is testing your air leakage rate. Again, 2 PSI in one minute for single, 3 PSI in one minute for combination. Now... You're gonna have you have another air leakage rate, and this is with your service brakes applied. So it says <clears throat> it says with the air pressure built up to govern a cutout, shut off the engine, chalk the wheels, release the parking brake and the traction um, tractor protection valve, and fully apply the brake the foot pet um, brake. Hold the foot brake for one minute. After the initial pressure drop, if the air pressure falls more than three PSI in one minute for a single vehicle, more than four PSI for combination, the air loss rate is too much. Check for air leaks and fix before driving. Otherwise, you could lose your brakes while driving. All right, so let's look at that again. So this particular test, so because we did the test before, right? We just turn the engine off, release the parking brake, and then we start timing the air pressure drop. In this test, we're going to do similar, but we're going to actually apply the brake pedal. So, I, when, so again, you're going to the fully charged system, about 125 PSI, right? I'm going to fully apply the brake pedal. I'm going to pull down the brake pedal and I'm going to hold it for one minute. Because I'm using the brake pedal, so I have my foot on the brake pedal, of course it's going to use air. So it says after the initial drop, air loss is, um, after the initial drop, so I'm at 125 PSI and I put my foot on the brake pedal it's going to automatically drop. Say we're going to just use a number. It's going to automatically, it's going to drop to 120. So I put my, my foot on the, the brake pedal for one minute. It's going to drop down. We'll say 120. After that initial drop, it should not move. It should not move more than three PSI for a single vehicle. In other words, after the initial drop, my foot's on it at 120. It shouldn't, I shouldn't lose more air than three PSI, meaning that from 120 to 117. It shouldn't go past 117. It shouldn't drop lower than 117. And then for a combination vehicle, it shouldn't drop more than 116. So hopefully that makes sense. Put on the brake. You got the, the air, you put on the brake for um, and hold for a minute after the, the first Initial drop, <coughs> excuse me, after the initial drop more, it shouldn't drop more than three PSI. And before after that, it shouldn't drop more than four PSI for combination. All right. Now you have another test. You have your um, test, your parking brake. Okay. Stop the vehicle. Put on the parking brake and gently pull against it in a low gear to test the parking brake 
that that the parking brake will hold. This is the same test actually we did do in chapter two. Okay, it's just being reiterated here. Again, stop the vehicle, put on the parking brake, and gently pull against it in low gear to test the parking brake that the parking brake will hold. All right, and then um, one more test is the um, that's the parking brake. Then your service brake. Wait for normal air pressure. Uh, release the parking brake, move the vehicle slowly, about five miles per hour, and apply the brakes firmly until the, um, using the brake pedal. Note the vehicle in pulling from one side to the other, any unusual feel or delayed stopping. This test may show you problems, which you otherwise wouldn't know until you needed the brakes on the road. Okay, so that's the, the testing your parking brake and testing your service brake. All right. All right, 5.4, using air brakes, page 51. So um, with this, we've already spoken about um, in section two about braking with anti-lock brakes. I'm not gonna go into it um, any uh, in detail anymore. Um, again, you brake as you always have. Brake the same way whether you have um, any lock brakes or not, and use only the force necessary to stop safely and stay in control. Okay, so again, we, I'm not going to go into this anymore. Um, we've talked about it in second um, section two. Again, drive normally uh, if your um, light comes on. All right, emergency stops. Again, we talked about this as well in section two. Um, breaking away that you will, that keeps that vehicle in a straight line and allows you to turn if it becomes necessary. Again, that was controlled braking and stab braking. Again, that we discussed in chapter two. The one thing that um, the new, one new thing in this particular section is your brake lag. Okay, let's talk about that. <clears throat> Five point four point four. Stopping distance was described in section two. Okay, we talked about that under speed and stopping distance. I think that was 2.6. Now, if I remember that, oh my goodness, I remember that. That's crazy. All right, so under 2.6, it was stopping distance, right? With air brakes, there is additional delay. Brake lag, okay? This is the time required for the brakes to work after the brake pedal is pushed. With hydraulic brakes, the brakes work instantly. However, with air brakes, it takes a little longer. It takes one half second or more, okay? For the air to flow through the lines to the brakes. Thus, the total stopping distance for vehicles with air brake system is made up of four different factors. So you, again, you had your perception, right? Your perception is my my eyes see it, right? And my it's and my eyes see it, and it, it's um, my brain is is um, recognizing that it's a hazard. And then your reaction, then you're telling your brain to take your foot off the accelerator and put it on the brake. And then of course you have your brake lag. Your brake lag again. Your brake lag again, it is the time required for the brakes to work after the brake pedal is pushed, all right? So again, it um, with air brakes, it takes a little longer for the air to flow through the lines to the brakes. Okay, so that is brake lag. It's an additional 32 feet, right? Brake lag. Then of course you had your braking distance and your total stopping distance, right? So the air, uh, brake lag distance at 55 miles per hour on a dry pavement adds 32 feet. So at 55 miles per hour for an average driver under good traction and brake conditions, the total stopping distance is over 450 feet, or actually 451, okay? 451 feet. So again, that is a definite test question, and it will be, it will be indicated as something like, um, how many feet are, you know, the, the, the feet, how many feet are in a brake lag? But it's definitely brake lag. Just make sure you remember that it's 32 feet. It's 
32 feet for air brakes. All right, um, we've talked about extensively about brake fading and failure. I'm not going to go through that again. I'm, I am going to mention in the third paragraph now, one, two, three, the third paragraph, the first sentence. We've said this already, but I want to reiterate it again. Brake, fad, brake fade is also affected by adjustment. To safety control a vehicle, every brake must do its share of work. Okay, you will see that as a test question. Brake fade is also affected by adjustment. All right. Um, we